we're on to part two. How do catalysts affect a reaction? Just in general, but specifically remember this is about enzymes. So first we're going to differentiate first order and second order re reactions because enzymes can do both. We're going to explain transition states. We're going to draw a free energy reaction coordinate diagram showing how the presence of a catalyst, such as an enzyme, affects the overall free energy of the diagram. What does it mean? Calculate the rate enhancement of a catalyzed reaction. So what equation do you need for that? Okay, so starting off, the difference between first order and second order reactions. If you remember, back to general chemistry, the first order reactions, there's typically one molecule becoming another molecule. So the velocity here is uh, the rate you can think of it as the creation of B over time or the disappearance of A over time. Okay. But at the end of the day, this is going to give us, there's some constant here related to the amount of A. And because we don't really know how many moles of A are needed to become B, um, we can add in that, that idea right here. So when n equals 1, if we just have one molecule becoming another one molecule, the rate is dependent on one single con concentration. That's called a first order reaction. So it's one molecule. One molecule going to make the product. Similarly, if n equals 2, if we have two molecules, zip, 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 for example, a plus B making C, then this would be a second order reaction because we either have two moles of, some, of one thing or two separate molecules becoming a third thing. And both of these would be second order. And we would not see a linear decay there. Okay. So an enzyme example of this, and this happens a lot in enzymes, is the binding of myoglobin to oxygen, which myoglobin is found in your blood, forms myoglobin oxide. So this is our enzyme binding an oxygen, becoming one molecule. So this is a second order reaction. So as we're thinking about enzymes, just in general, we can write enzyme as E. So E m means enzyme, S means substrate, P means product. Okay, so keep that in mind. We have enzyme must bind a substrate. This will make an enzyme substrate complex, which will then release the product. Okay, so here we have a second order reaction where two molecules are coming together. Here we've got a first order decay where one molecule is splitting up. Okay, so keep that in mind. Second order arrow, first or order arrow, enzymes do both. Okay, so what does this mean in terms of reaction coordinate diagrams? We'll do this for this equation. Oh, my line is terrible. One moment. what I've drawn here is the free energy is on the y-axis and the reaction coordinate is across the bottom. So remember what reaction coordinate means is like reaction progress. So these are called free energy diagrams or reaction coordinate diagrams depending on when you learned it. Okay, so we've got enzymes and substrates. We'll have some amount of free energy. It doesn't really matter what it is the middle part will have some higher amount of free energy and then the end will have some different amount of free energy which is probably much lower. Okay, and then we just go in and connect the dots here. So, Okay, so just a reminder of how chemical rea reactions work and how this works. Molecules have an array of different energy at any given time. So some molecules can make it over this energy barrier, 
this activation energy, right? So that they can make it over the hump and become the low energy products and they have no problem with that. Some molecules simply don't have that amount of energy. So they uh, sort of float around until they're acted upon with either heat or light or um, transfer of kinetic energy from other molecules to kind of push them in this direction. Before they get all the way to the products, there's this high energy state called the transition state, known as the double dagger, right? The transition state. And so this high energy state, once a molecule reaches here, it can actually go either in the forward direction or in the reverse direction. Really, it can happen. It can go either way, right? So just because you get here doesn't, like, you know, just because you make it to the senior year of college doesn't mean you're going to finish. You could still drop out. Okay, and because both of these energy states are lower than this, it would be favorable, right? You, we're just looking for a low energy state. So if you drop out, you can always try again later to, to graduate and get your degree. Or you can just graduate right now, right, and get your degree. That's your low energy state. Same thing with the molecules. It can go either way. So another way to think about this transition state is if we use maybe symbols, right? So if we have a star shape, and what we want to make is a circle shape, the transition state is going to be like the intermediate part between the star shape and the circle shape. So maybe it'll look like a pentagon. So it's not all the way to circle yet, and it's actually really hard to get here. But once you get there, it looks kind of, kind of like the starting, kind of like the ending, it's somewhere in between. So that's another way that you can think of transition states. It's transitioning from um, reactants to products. So what the enzymes do for this reaction, which I'm going to show in bright blue, is they take over this transition state for the most part. They lower the activation energy, and there's several ways that they do this. And basically what this means, by lowering the activation energy, the molecules that get up to this point, they can still go either forward or reverse, but it's likely that more would go into the final product state. And then because this energy barrier is so high, once it's in the product state, very, very unlikely that it's going to become substrate again. Because this delta G, or I guess change in delta G, is much lower than this delta G needed. Okay. So this forward reaction is much easier to get to because the energy is much lower than the reverse reaction. So hopefully none of that was really new and that was just a refresher. And hopefully I didn't scare you too bad. So now this is probably a new part. So how do we put a number to how much the enzyme is changing the reaction? And also I want to point out, before we move on, right, the energy of the products and the reactants hasn't changed based on the addition of the enzyme. The enzyme only changes the transition state energy, only this activation energy, and it does not affect the equilibrium. Okay? Enzymes do not affect the equilibrium. So keep that in mind as well. Okay. So what do they affect? Well, we have a measurement for how much an enzyme speeds up a reaction, and that is called the rate enhancement. And so the way you figure out the rate enhancement is you compare the rate of the catalyzed reaction to the rate of the non-catalyzed reaction. And this ratio tells us how much that the enzyme has improved the reaction rate. So if you consider some of these catalyzed versus non-catalyzed rate reactions, um, there's a figure in your book that kind of does a really great job with this. And I want to point out this one enzyme, ODC, 
is one of the best enzymes for this. This stands for arotidine 5 prime phosphate decarboxylase. So the decarboxylase is really, really good at this, right? So it takes a reaction that the half-life of it would be something like 5 billion years. I'm sorry, 5 million years is how long that uncatalyzed reaction would take. And it speeds it up and performs it in the matter of seconds. On the first order rate constant, it, it can do this reaction in a second. So that rate constant, that rate enhancement, is on the order of like 10 to the 17. Enhancement. So in order to calculate that, you have to get the kcat and the kanon, and you, you just divide them. And so that's a ridiculously huge number. Write a 10 with 17 zeros after it. It's, it's a lot. So, moral of the story, we are here today and we can have life processes because of enzymes. Because really, this, this enzyme is used to make your DNA, arotidine 5 prime um, monophosphate decarboxylase. It's also called OMPDC in the literature. If we had to wait 5 million years to make the DNA nucleotides, we would not exist. So, think an enzyme.